What's up guys? Welcome back to the Slam Duncan YouTube channel. I'm going to be breaking down kind of my thoughts on what the Bulls are going to be doing at the trade deadline. I've kind of mentioned it in some previous videos before, but I just want to kind of really go into detail of my thoughts and uh, my opinion on the trade deadline. And then uh, after that, we're going to kind of talk about the uh, Bulls versus Heat game that just happened um, as I'm recording uh, this video right after that game. But I wanted to record a video about the trade deadline because it is, I think, now 13 days away. Um, I'm recording this on the 12th, so the deadline is March 25th. The Bulls play seven games uh, before that deadline, so there is some time for the front office to make some more decisions and to watch more gameplay. But personally, I do not think that the Bulls are going to be doing that much, and I'm going to kind of break it down to you uh, why I don't think the Bulls will be doing too much. But before we get into that, though, make sure you hit that like button, and if you're new to the channel, especially if you're a Bulls fan, hit that subscribe button. Um, let's get into this, and I want to hear your comments uh, down below on the Bulls uh, trade deadline stuff. But I want to kind of go into like the money situation for the Bulls right now. Um, as you can see right now, and we've talked about this a lot of times, the Bulls right now don't have any money. They have no cap space. They don't have any trade exceptions that they can use. They're um, at 124 million, and obviously the cap is at 109 million. So there we're a team that's working over the cap right now. And that makes it hard for this Bulls team to really make any sort of moves to bring in a guy of big value because we can't absorb that contract. And unfortunately, a lot of money is wrapped up in Otto Porter, therefore limiting our options to be you know, for guys to be traded to like Young and Sadoransky. But I think it's pretty obvious that we need to keep Young around unless he's getting traded for good value. And we need Sadoransky just so we can actually have a ball handler on this team. Um, it, um for at the point guard position, especially if Levine's not in the game, right? So, like, it's kind of hard to trade these guys just so we can at least be a functioning team moving forward. But the main thing I want to talk about, though, is, like, we don't really have much that can be sent out. A lot of guys are on very small deals on their rookie contracts, right? Uh, but even guys like Garrett Temple, for example, he's on a mid-level exception deal, and that's very, very small. So we don't have a lot, of, a lot of money to be sent out. Therefore, it's hard for the Bulls to be sending out a bunch of money to, you know, get to bring uh, back guys that have like low contracts, but also good value. So it's tough for the Bulls to make any sort of deals at the trade deadline. But also, I mean, if you look at right now the 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 standings of. Uh, for the uh, NBA, like it, it's as you can probably have you've all seen all year, right? The Eastern Conference is right now. It is just crunched. It is very, very tight. Um, I don't know if these are updated because I know there's a game going on still right now as I'm recording this. But basically, as you can see, like the four heat, the uh, four, the four seed, the Miami Heat, all the way down to the 13 seed Cleveland Cavaliers. It's separated by five and a half games, right? So even guy like even the Magic, for example, they're still probably thinking, "Hey, we can make the playoffs." I mean, look, we're only what four and a half games out of the eight seed. So there, a lot of teams right now, they're already kind of thinking like, "Well, we're not going to be going out and selling a bunch of our assets, right?" So it's going to be kind of hard for the Bulls to go out and talk to a team willing to be like. Hey, yeah, we're, we're willing to give up a pretty solid player right now because a lot of teams, I think, are trying to make that playoff push. Therefore, not a lot of sellers on the market. Therefore, the Bulls don't really have a lot of options to go out and go get somebody that the, you they would probably go get right now to help make this team better, You know, whether it's a point guard position or you know center position or a forward position. There's just not a lot of guys like on the market. I mean, you, you, you see all these rumors and everything, but it's like the main market right now is the buyout market, not the trade market, right? And... The other thing I really want to bring up to Bulls fans, like I, I see a bunch of Bulls fans right now. They're like, man, we, the Bulls need to do something so this team can make the playoffs. I'm like, first off, again, I don't think this team is supposed to make the playoffs. I think this team has overachieved ex expectations, but a lot of Bulls fans disagree with me on that. But again, this team wasn't supposed to be a, a for sure guaranteed playoff team. And remember, this is an evaluation season, right? So it's not like the Bulls need to go out and get somebody to meet their goals, right? Their goal was just to evaluate the players on the roster. And I think we're kind of at the point that we're seeing like, all right, there are some serious holes on this team and that needs to be addressed. But I don't think it needs to be addressed right now at the trade deadline that's less than two weeks away. There's no reason for you to address it because one, you're probably going to get a rental if you do address it. And so it's a short-term solution. That person can then probably leave then the next year if they hit free agency as most guys on uh, one-year deals are uh, probably going to be traded in, instead of guys like on like long-term deals. But number two, it's like you're using your assets then if you're going to try to make a solution right now, right? Um, and that's what's kind of scary to me because let's say you go out and trade 
for a guy to, to help fill the point guard position, for example. It's like, you have to use one of your assets here, which is, you know, some young guys, right? But at the same time, it's like, you're probably going to have to throw in some picks, and I just don't think that's necessary, because in the offseason, you're going to have many more options available to you to help fulfill the needs of this team. And I'm going to kind of show you what I'm thinking about. So as we've all kind of seen this year, that the Bulls need a point guard. And I think Kobe White right now is just, he's too young to be ha having the point guard position. Um, he doesn't understand the game well enough. And I'm not saying that he will never get there. But right now, this Bulls team needs a point guard to take it to the next level because we're at that point, we're seeing that Levine right now is an all-star. And for this team to start moving forward and progressing, get out of rebuilding mode, they need to help. They need to help him in bringing guys that that will um, help him. So, obviously, a point guard is going to help drastically with that. And I I'm bringing up uh, this page, which shows uh, point guards uh, that are going to be re uh, free agents in the 2021 free agency. Now, I am showing the club and player option guys, so we can just ignore that and also ignore the ads. I apologize, but. There are some names on this list, and if you think about it, the only thing then the Bulls are giving up if they go out and get some of these guys is just money. We don't have to give up any assets, and not only that, we can then sign them to a contract that benefits us. We don't have to take on a contract that is worse or does not benefit us, right? And there are a couple of names that are on here. I mean, obviously, like, Chris Paul is the guy that I'm like, we're not getting him. He's accepting that player option. He's staying with Phoenix. There's no reason for him to decline that, right? Mike Conley, I don't see him leaving either. I think the Jazz are going to obviously keep him, and they have his bird rights so they can go over the cap and re-sign him. And Jazz right now, they're at the top of the Western Conference and top of the league. So it's like, those guys are off the table. And as much as I would love those guys, and they would definitely help the Bulls, it's like, Obviously, you know, we're, let's be realistic. But there are certain names here that I think can really benefit us. And number one is a Cal Lowry, for example, right? And I don't know what Cal Lowry's, you know, future um, holds because he is kind of in some trade rumors right now. You know, some like a team in Philadelphia could really use him. But he is on his last year of his deal. And honestly, I don't think he's going to get $30 million, um, in this next in, uh, when in the offseason. There's just no reason for a team to pay him $30 million a year. But, you know, maybe he decides, hey... I'm going to go to a team that I can help, you know, teach your young guys because it's going to be hard for him to kind of get onto a contender that doesn't already have a really good ball handler, right? Unless you're like a team like Philly, for example, it's like, I don't see Kyle Lowry really getting onto some sort of contender or a team willing to pay him so much to uh, come in and be not exactly an all-star, but a still a good player. So it's going to be tough for him to get onto a contending team with all of his wants, but maybe a team like the Bulls, for example, could be an option. And a guy like Kyle Lowry is definitely a guy that the Bulls could definitely use, right? Um, another, another guy I'm seeing is Patrick Patty Mills. And, you know, I would be kind of shocked if uh, the Spurs do let Patty Mills go. He is obviously, you know, one of the mainstays for the Spurs. But who knows, man? I Maybe he wants a bigger payday than he gets for this. But one of the things that I keep trying to bring up to Bulls fans, it's like this team doesn't need like an incredible passing point guard. What they just need is they need a ball handler slash a floor general. And I've said this in a video. You can even watch this video up here that explains it more. But this team needs a floor general. They don't need like a passing point guard or like a really good passing point guard. They just need a guy that can take pressure off of Levine and bring the ball up the court, but also run the offense effectively. And just them being able to run the offense brings so much pressure off of Levine. And if they're able to also knock down a shot, you know, maybe not average, you know, 25, but average around 16, 17, that's even better, right? And a guy like Patty Mills probably won't average 16 or 17, but he could definitely average 14 in the starting lineup. And he is a great three-point shooter. But the main thing about Patty Mills is that he can, knows how to run an offense, right? Any point guard really in a San Antonio Spurs system under Greg Popovich knows how to run an offense at least. And Patty Mills knows how to do that, right? So he's a guy that I'm kind of looking at. Another guy is Spencer Dinwiddie, and this is kind of interesting. Now, I, he, for, in my opinion, I think Spencer Dinwiddie declines his player option. I'd be shocked if he accepts it. I know he's injured, but I really think he's going to decline it. And, you know, Brooklyn, they got a lot of money tied up right now. So maybe they're not willing to pay Spencer Dinwiddie after this season. And he could just kind of go out into the free agency market. And, you know, last season I thought Spencer Dinwiddie should have been an all-star. And now, you know, he's out there. And the Bulls, remember, they have money in the offseason. Therefore, they have a bunch of options. And they could go spend it on a guy like Spencer Dinwiddie. But that is also wishful thinking. I'm not exactly think. I don't really think it's going to happen. Guy like Derrick Rose. Like, We've seen under uh, when he's been playing for the Knicks that he knows how to run an offense, right? And again, he's not a passer, but just having a guy like Derrick Rose in the starting lineup it will just help this team tremendously. And then the last guy I really want to bring up is TJ McConnell. 
A lot of people do not know T.J. McConnell, but he is having a really good year on the Pacers this year, and I love what T.J. McConnell brings. He is just a scrappy dude. I mean, you, you kind of a lot of times Stacey King compares him to Archie Diacono, but I think that's an unfair comparison. Like T.J. McConnell is a scrappy point guard, but he knows how to run an offense. He knows how to uh, be an actual leader on the floor, and I love T.J. McConnell, man. I would love for him to come in and. Uh, you know, be the starting point guard for this Bulls team. Again, he's not going to average 17. He's not going to be a great scorer, but he is a deadly mid-range game. He is a great defender, which his team obviously needs defense, right? And he can 100% be the floor general for this team. So the Bulls have options, right, in the offseason, and they have much more options due to the fact that they have money this offseason, right? And just looking at the uh, total salary right now um, for the projected for next year, like... 72 million I mean that already that's about 30 that's about 30 plus million just for Otto Porter coming off and some of the, and Felicio coming off right now they could get even more uh, money because Stadis Young and Sadaransky these guys are on uh, non-guaranteed deals right so get rid of these two guys and all of a sudden we're looking at 50 plus million dollars in cap space and I already think that a good chunk of that is going to go towards Levine cuz Levine's probably get, is going to get his contract renegotiated but I mean, that's for a separate video later, which I'll get to. But still, though, that means that there's a good amount of money left on the table for the Bulls to go out and potentially get one of these guys. But the second thing is this. You know, we don't need to make a trade right now to help the point guard position, right? Or really any position because it's like, it's hard to do that, right? Again, we're wrapped up in money. We don't have a lot of big contracts that we could throw out there. So it's like, what are we going to do? I, I don't want to give up a first. I'm kind of willing to give up like a really future late second, but that's it. I'd rather keep as many picks as we can, especially because we're rebuilding, right? So, you know, a guy like R Ricky Rubio, for example, is is someone a lot of Bulls fans like Ricky Rubio because he played for the Suns last year and the Suns won 8 and 0 in the bubble. And, you know, it's kind of like in a similar phase to what the Bulls are right now. So you got Zach Levine as your all star. You're starting to build the team a little bit, right? But they obviously need a point guard because the Suns didn't have a point guard for the longest time. They brought in Rubio and that drastically helped them, right? So a guy like Ricky Rubio is, you know, a lot of Bulls fans are, like, looking at him. And, you know, Rubio's, you know, again, he's not going to score a lot, but he could definitely be the floor general, and he's definitely a better uh, defender than Kobe White right now. So, and that's basically all the Bulls need. But, you know, a lot of people are like, let's trade for Rubio now. First off, I don't think the Timberwolves are going to do that. I think right now with the Timberwolves are having an issue where it's like, they, they don't know D'Angelo Russell's health, unfortunately, and they need a point guard. So, you know, helping develop Anthony Edwards, they want to keep Rubio. But the main thing to me is that, the Bulls really don't have any sort of deal that it would actually get Rubio and, you know, uh, money-wise. Like, you could send out Sadoransky, but then you still need to make up about $5 million, right? So, are you going to give up, like, Denzel or something? And I just don't think the Timberwolves would accept that. That just seems like a bad deal for them. But the Bulls have money in the offseason. Therefore, trading for a guy like Rubio, who is under contract for the next season, and the Timberwolves would probably be more willing to get rid of him due to the fact he's on the last year of his deal, the Bulls can accept this salary much easily uh, in the in the offseason, right? Sorry, much more easily in the offseason, right? Because they have money. They can absorb that contract, but they can't absorb any contracts right now. So I think it's, you know, it would be more ideal for the Bulls to, you know, trade for Guy Rubio in the offseason because they don't have to give up as much or trade as much away just for contract reasons. They can just trade whoever really that they want and absorb that contract much more easily. So... That's the reason why I really don't think that the Bulls are going to be doing that much in um, at the trade deadline, which is less than two weeks away. I already hear a bunch of stuff where it's like, hey, um, maybe we should trade Lowry, or hey, we, sh we should trade Wendell Carter Jr., etc., or like trade Kobe White now and get, get stuff back. And you know what? I, I understand where people are coming from. I think the one person that could be traded at the trade deadline would be Larry Markin just due to the fact that he's about to hit free agency. But at the same time, though, we have to understand, this is an evaluation season, right? And usually when a front office comes in, the first season, they just kind of look at the team. They're, they're not really doing too much. They want to understand of who they actually have right now and get a sense of where the team is at. And this is, you know, what Karnas Shovis is doing is that he's just watching the team, evaluating, seeing who they have, what this team needs. And then usually then in the offseason, they make a bunch of moves. Trading people right now, I just think hinders this, the Bulls' ability to make those types of moves in the offseason, or this upcoming offseason that they need to make, right? Because if you, let's say you trade a guy like Kobe White right now, that's an asset. 
and then you're trading him away, and what are you going to get in return? Are you actually going to get a long-term solution right now? I don't think a lot of teams are willing to actually give up like a long-term solution right now. There just aren't many guys out there that are like, hey, we're out in the market right now, and we can fill that spot for you long-term. There just isn't, right? So why why waste an asset when you use Kobe White if you're going to trade him, right, for something else? Or why waste an asset in one of the cards Jr. right now where you can trade it for something else later down the line? Then having to waste an asset right now or potentially even waste a first round pick and then even potentially ruin your cap space for the future. This cap space right now is what allows the Bulls to not have to completely strip down again because this cap space allows them to make these big trades in the offseason or really at any time in the future because they can absorb big contracts um, and not have to give up a bunch of money or one big player because they have this money, right? So just to kind of top this off, I really don't think the Bulls are going to be doing that much at the trade deadline. If anything, they're going to be sellers. Like that's They're not going to be buying, in my opinion. Um, these next couple of games will probably dictate what the front office is going to do. Um, but to be honest, I won't be mad if the, if the front office just is like, we're not doing anything right now. And that's not them saying, hey, this team is fine. Which a lot of Bulls fans think like, oh my god, if they do nothing, then they, they clearly think that this team is okay. That's unacceptable. Like, no, they they know that this team needs work. I mean, a team that's 16 and 20 right now clearly needs work. And all front offices should know that, right? So don't start thinking like, oh, if they don't do anything, oh, they, this, they don't know what they're doing. No, stop it. And that's why I can't stand about Bulls fans right now because I'm just seeing so many people like, wow, the front office clearly doesn't understand that we need a point guard. Like, no, they clearly do understand that they need a point guard. But what options are there right now? It's like, if you're going to say like, oh, the Bulls need a point guard right now, I'm like, then tell me who they're going to go get right now at the trade deadline without giving up too much and ruining their future, right? That's where it's kind of with Bulls fans I don't really understand because it's easier for them to get a point guard in the offseason without having to give up so much right now, right? So it just doesn't make sense to me what a bunch of Bulls fans are thinking because I think that if they wait until the offseason to fix this team, they have so much flexibility and assets to fix this team. But if you get rid of those assets right now, then you can't fix the team in the offseason, right? Then you can't make the major changes. So again, Bulls... Off, the Bulls trade deadline, they're probably not going to do too much. They'll probably be sellers, if anything. But don't be surprised if they just stand pat. And they're just like, Let's, we're just still evaluating the team. Because remember, Market just got back. Otto Porter Jr. just got back. Now, I don't know about Otto Porter Jr.'s future. But I'm pretty sure the front office really wants to see what Markkinen and Levine can do together. Because we just have not seen it at all in the NBA, unfortunately. So I won't be surprised if the front office is like, no, we want to see Levine and Markin and play together, see what they can do, and then we'll make our decision about their future in the offseason. So that's my opinion on the Bulls trade deadline, which is less than two weeks away. Um, a lot of games before the deadline, but um, I don't really see those games dictating too much of what the Bulls front office do. If anything, I, I just think Thaddeus Young is probably the person to be moved if there is a trade that does happen. Um and that, that will be Thaddeus Young. But if, if they decide to really strip it down, then I think marketing could potentially be traded. Um, I know a bunch of people have, like, marketing for Lonzo Ball. That just... The Pelicans, if they do that, they're stupid. There's no reason for the Pelicans to do such a thing, right? So, to get Lonzo Ball, it would take a lot more than just marketing. It would take a, a, a decent amount. So, let's just not think, hey, the Bulls can go out and get all these people. No, it's not that possible. It's not that easy. It's not very possible. You're probably going to have to wait for these guys to start you know, hitting the market, then use your money to get these guys. What's up guys, this is Duncan here. I decided to split this video into two separate videos, so this video is just going to be only me talking about the Bulls and my prediction at the trade deadline and future ideas for them. But if you want to see my reaction to the Bulls vs. Heat game, I made a separate video uh, for that. So I released both these videos at the exact same time, so if you want to see my Bulls vs. Heat reaction, then you can click the... Uh, up in the cards right here or in the description box below or you can just go to my channel and click on that video as well but i hope you guys enjoyed both of these videos if you did make sure you hit that like button if you're new to the channel hit that subscribe button i'll see you guys in the next video peace